Hello, Jenny Hall here for Honey Bee Stamps. Today I have a really unusual card to share with you. This is the Lantern Builder A2 Honeycuts dies, and I'm pairing that with the Farmhouse Tree Builder Stamps and Dies and one of the new buzzwords. It's the Merry Buzzword with the a coordinating stamps. So here is a look at the dies that I've already cut off camera and I'll be using. I have used some heavyweight cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock. And because I want to make it a shaped card and I want a solid back, then I'm going to trace just the outline of the lantern on some 110 pound cardstock. There might be another way to cut the base, but I thought this was just be the quickest and easiest. So now this is going to be the in-between layer, but I want it to not be white. I guess I could have cut it out of some really heavyweight gray cardstock, but I felt like I wanted to add the color and have everything kind of meet up and, and match, and you'll see how it ends up in the end. So I'm going to use this really nice smoky gray Distress Oxide, and it's the same color that I used on that middle layer that is the white die cut. And I'm going to add it just around the edges of the back base piece. Then I'm going to take Fossilized Amber Distress Oxide and just put it around that middle area and then bring a little bit of Spice Marmalade concentrated just where the flame of a fire candle would be just right there in the middle and with a very light hand i'm adding some color to that area i'm trying to let the color graduations be very very subtle as this is to me is supposed to look like it's just a glowing lantern like on a cold night kind of old country style on the front porch very subtle and this is going to be that back piece so now i'm going back over with that same gray ink and going right over the yellow where the yellow meets the gray and it's going to soften everything just like magic softening that transition between where the glowing part is and kind of the cool area. Very easy and light-handed. So once I have that area looking like I feel like it's comfortable, then I'm going to add some very narrow strips of double-sided foam to that area that is, either you can put the strips on the back of the black die cut or put them on the front of the gray. It doesn't matter, but try to line them up as straight as you can. And that is going to be our really stable front. Because it, these pieces are both heavy cardstock, it's going to make it really stable. So here's our back piece and I'm just giving a score. And then I will adhere the area that's above the score down to the back. So this is our third layer. And here we have it. Now we have a hinged back design that is going to keep this really stable and allow it to stand up. Now I'm going to put the other pieces that were pre-die cut and on the little circle area, I guess that's supposed to be like a little hanger or handle, then I have die cut three of the circles and stacked them up. I chose to do that because one little die cut could get torn off here or there, especially if it gets in the mail. I don't want anything to happen to it, but I felt like three would be a really nice number. So now I'm using some embossing ink and I'm taking that bottom platform die cut and embossing the word Christmas that is from the Mary stamp set and using that gold embossing powder to just let it show up so beautifully. I was really generous with the anti-static bag, so I'm using my honeybee cloth just to go over it and remove it before, remove any of the excess before I adhere it. And there you go. Now the lamp is all put together and I've used that Merry Buzzword 
and use some gold foil paper and check out just how pretty that is. This reminds me of some decorations that are kind of timeless. So this could be something that you could create some holiday wall art or something to place up on the mantle. Now I'm going to use from the Farmhouse Builder die set and stamps, one of these Christmas swags. I wasn't sure how I wanted to decorate the lantern, but I thought maybe by placing the swag, it would emulate just enough greenery. So I want this not to look like it's colored inside the lines. Instead, I want it to look like it's kind of a bit more green and just have the green really be eye-catching. So I chose to just use a really light Copic marker, which is the G24, and color that entire area that would be the background and the foreground of, of all. I just colored all of them. And then I'm using that G19, that's the darker green, to go back in and make some flick motions for what would be like the evergreen bow part of it. Now I'm using two red markers to go in and color the bows. And once I have everything colored, then I'm going to use a gold gel pen that I've had in my stash for years. I have a, a whole package of gel pens that are metallic and glitter. And I love when I can pull those out and use them on a project because I feel justified still having them in my craft stash. So using something that I've had around forever is a great feeling. So those little gold accents are going to echo the gold embossing on the sentiment and the gold die cut buzzword letters. And it's going to kind of tie all that in together. I'm going to die cut both of these and then once I have them die cut, I will overlap them and place one on top of the other, kind of offset just a little bit, and use some liquid glue to adhere them. Now I noticed there was a few spots where I didn't go down far enough with that light green, so I just kind of touched them up there. You can see where I've overlapped those die cuts, and I'm just holding them together with my fingers and then kind of squishing them around a little bit just to make sure that I get a good connection. And then I will simply adhere them on the front of the card. You could use a really large bow instead of the little swag area, but I like the look that the small greenery gives to the large lantern. And you can see here that you can write a note on the back and it stands up all by itself. Really fun to create. I hope that you've enjoyed this project and it gives you more, more ideas for your Christmas card crafting. Thanks for watching.